In the second part of uh, working with web service at KU Leuven, we will look at some advanced uh, features of the web service service. I will use for this an already uh, completed survey uh, where we asked students of cultural studies, alumni students, to give us feedback on their study at KU Leuven. Now, first highlight some elements in the interface. So with this home, you go to the first page, to the home of the administrative interface. Here on the question mark, you can invoke a window with the Lime survey documentation in several languages. And then uh, something important here, you have the link towards your published survey. And with this button I can publish it or stop the survey of being available. With this button I can edit the surrounding text elements and I will invoke it. And then you see that you can uh, define description of the survey you can have the welcome wording that will appear at the first page and then you can edit a message that appears when the survey has been completed. Uh, you could also add a URL that will be linked to when the survey is ended and eventually uh, define date and uh, decimal separation values. So these are, are some uh, basic uh, setups for the text. You can also have some standard options, for example the language, in this case it was Dutch survey. Of course it is important to complete an email of the survey manager. You then have options for the presentations where you can choose whether to show the questions uh, question by question or grouped eh? so where you show each questions in one group in on one page or when you have a page with all the questions uh, simultaneously you can decide a lot of options about how you will proceed you can uh, decide also whether the, the respondents can access the statistics. Now, for the publication you can uh, decide how you will uh, make it available, eh? whether uh, you make it public and from what dates. You can also uh, use a CAPTCHA eh, to avoid that robots start completing your survey and then you could um, have a lot of mail interaction also you can also indicate whether the respondent can stop completing the assignment and can come at uh, the um, survey and can come back at a later time there is also a uh, way to define anonymity of the survey and whether uh, there can be access afterwards to the completed survey. So these are all options that you could want to use and to set up. There are also possibilities to export the survey that you made and to run it on an other Lime survey service. For example, the LimeSurvey.com service, then you export this service and you import it there, then you can run it. And of course, you can make a printable version of your survey. And then you could uh, work with uh, access codes. So there is a whole system in uh, place where 
you could send out through an automated mail access codes, individual access codes for the survey. This way you can work with controlled people and still protect their privacy. Uh, if you would want to uh, do this, the, please read the documentation because it is somewhat more uh, complex to uh, achieve. Okay, now maybe one detail that wasn't mentioned in the previous uh, uh, instruction video that is that when you have a lot of blocks of questions and uh, not all questions are relevant for all respondents and you want to branch out uh, some uh, forms uh, we have an example here where we have questions related to people who are uh, at the moment of the survey looking for a job and you see that this question is optional and this means that there are conditions in place and this sim symbol is used to provide in those conditions so when I click here you will see that there is a condition that this question will only be shown when the question what has happened after you graduated from cultural studies has been answered by I am still looking for work. So this question will also only be proposed to those respondents. I'll uh, go back now and uh, highlight some of the possibilities uh, once your survey is running. So you have your home page, you have all these tools available and one of the tools that uh, is quite interesting and, and quite elaborated here at the KU Leuven implementation is that you could uh, query the responses and make some initial statistics. So here we have 75 respondents who completed the whole survey, 5 didn't complete it and the total response was 80. And now I can decide what I uh, want to do. I can show all responses. Hmm? Uh, maybe show only the last 50 ones when it is, is a very large scale survey. Uh, I can have a look at uh, the survey itself or I can start producing statistics. And then we have several options to export the survey results. But let's look at those statistics. So in those statistics I can choose whether I want all responses or only the complete responses and I can choose the responses that I'm interested in so the questions that I want to uh, study for example suppose that I only want this question uh, what was your study uh, before cultural studies and I could say show me some graphics and then the format of export. I will now just do it through uh, HTML but uh, often it is very interesting to produce a report in PDF format of course. And uh, I will show the statistics and then I have for this one question I selected the number of respondents and uh, the breakup uh, between the options and, and so I can see that 24 of those students before studied uh, language and literature, 9 uh, history etc. So I have an overview. That's when I make uh, one uh, selection here and of course it all, this also works as a filter I will show this in a moment. Uh, but first let me show you all results. So I say, I click here, show all available fields and I could maybe also make subtotals and then I also will show graphs. 
Now this might take a while. Okay. Here we have the results. And I have the first question with a detail, a breakup, the pi, second question, and so on. So I get the full report with available data. And um, if there is somewhere an open question, I'm not sure. Yes. For example, here we had four options and then other. So I, I uh, continued studying, I'm looking for a job, I found a job, or I took a sab sabbatical or something else. And one respondent completed this. So I can then call a little window where I have the response of this one respondent, the respondent number and what he told. And essentially he states here that he is working but also continued to study. That is the idea. So you have a complete uh, report in one uh, web page. But it becomes interesting when you use the profile question to split up the results and to look into the results for a partial group. For example, suppose that um, when that I want to limit uh, the statistics about those who are still looking for a job. So I'm clicking here for a filter. So I will now see the results of everything, but only for the respondents that indicated that they still are looking for a job. And that, that moment is where only five people. And now I can zoom in what was their uh, previous study and I get all the statistics on all questions, but limited to this subgroup. And this makes it, of course, very interesting. Uh, and certainly interesting to have these profiling questions because I can always also combine them. I can say I, I want those who found, who landed a job and I will combine this with those that uh, studied before language and literature. And now we see that 11 people uh, correspond to these criteria and I get uh, their uh, statistics. Now when you have numerical data, like here was a question how many years did they spend to their higher education and then you get uh, the basic statistics of the numerical value. Like here the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile and the maximum. Okay, this rounds up a little bit the possibilities of these, uh, these exports to, uh, to online statistics. But then there are a lot of other options to export the data. Uh, one is to export to Excel. You can choose the records that you want. You can limit it to the complete responses or to all responses. Uh, you can choose the questions. You can decide whether you recode the uh, answer values and you can then export it to Excel. Uh, you will then get a file. I will do here an export and it will, will provide me with uh, an Excel file. I will open it and make sure that Excel here fits the window and this is how the file is structured. Now you will notice that when you make a question where students can, uh, can uh, choose multiple options, for example uh, checkbox where you can uh, 
select several boxes then these will all become new columns and it makes it a little bit cumbersome to process so it is certainly easier when you work with closed series like a, a standard multiple choice where you can make one choice or a yes no question or a Likert scale uh, which uh, and you see that here the Likerts are uh, coded now you can export those Likerts also in an uh, in a number uh, format if you prefer uh, which might be handy when you use a statistics program mm. uh, this is standard procedure in, in uh, statistics to try to code every different answer into a number uh, a numerical value And of course in Excel it is uh, when you uh, know the technique of pivot tables uh, it is quite easy to um, cross-examine uh, questions. Now you can also export to SPSS and it will provide you with uh, two files, a syntax file and the data file. And here we worked on uh, really well, so the integration with SPSS works, works very fine. So you really have directly your variables correctly defined in SPSS and you can start to work. There is also a possibility to export to SAS or to R statistics. These were the most important aspects that I wanted to show. Of course, once, the, once you put the survey online through this button, you can invoke the window uh, and uh, take a look at your survey as it is presented to the end user. You do not have to record your answers, you can always at any time uh, abort your uh, view.